Hey guys, Shayna coming to you again from my office here in Portland and I wanted to talk to you about um, animal products and byproducts. So I named this whatever Facebook live um, you know something about raccoon guts and pound puppies and you guys know that I'm vegan and you know not everyone in the world has to be or wants to be vegan so that's not what this video is about but I did want to come to you and um, I guess share a few tips about what uh, what you're looking for on your labels to see if um, you've got some of those icky nasty ingredients now obviously I'm talking about skincare products hair care soaps lotion shampoo deodorant chapstick um, rather than nutritional products I think that's fairly easy to ascertain if you flip over an ingredient label. Usually if there's meat in your product, it will say fish, sardines, you know, whatever, beef. But in um, products like skincare, personal care products, a lot of times that information is sort of hidden. And so I wanted to give you a few tips to try to figure out how to find those. So, um, if you're watching, go grab the closest lotion bottle. Hand lotion, body lotion, whatever. You can even probably, if you're watching this later, you can just click pause. I'll wait. But I want you to turn it over to the ingredient label. So don't look at the front of it that says number one dermatologist recommended or whatever because, um, We've talked about the difference between dermatologists, recommended, approved, and tested. And if you missed that one, go back and watch that video. But um, since you've got that in front of you now, look at the ingredient label on the back of your product and see if you've got um, collagen, elastin, keratin, lanolin, tallow or tallowate on your ingredient labels. Um, there are a lot of ways that it will sort of sneak into your products, but those are sort of the most um, common. So again, that's collagen, elastin, keratin, lanolin, tallow, and tallowate. Um, sometimes you'll actually see lard on an ingredient label outside of food. Um, so if you've got those ingredients in your label, I'm sorry, I've got bad news for you. Um, I'm going to read you um, a little bit from this book, Mad Cowboy. Um, some of you may remember, this was like late 90s, Oprah Winfrey was sued in court alongside a man named Howard Lyman, who is a fourth generation Monta Montana cattle farmer. And he had come on the show to sort of expose some of this stuff. And his was a bigger environmental um, push. But he talked about the meat industry and um, what he exposed made Oprah exclaim, I'll never eat another hamburger again. Now, I don't know if that's true, but uh, at the time, the, I don't know, some beef council uh, basically sued her and Lyman in court for, I don't know if it was defamation or libel, you know, libel, I think. But anyway, that's whose book this is. It's that gentleman. Um, and it's a really, I mean, it's a short, easy read, but it talks about um, some of the economic ramifications of mechanizing their farm, among other things. But anyway, so I wanted to read to you um, about how it is that those icky, nasty things end up in some of our products, not in our bonds products, but you know, average general products that you'll find in your house. So hold please. When a cow is slaughtered, about half of its weight is not eaten by humans. 
the intestines and their contents, the head, hooves, and horns, as well as bones and blood. These are dumped into giant grinders at rendering plants, as are the entire bodies of cows and other farm animals known to be diseased. Rendering is a $2.4 billion a year industry, processing 40 billion pounds of dead animals a year. And side note, I'm just gonna look at this. This was published in 1998. So this is now, um, I don't know how accurate those numbers are, but it's gross nonetheless, $2.4 billion a year, processing 40 billion pounds of dead animals a year. Back to the book. There is simply no such thing in America as an animal too ravaged by disease, too cancerous, or too putrid to be welcomed by the all-embracing arms of the renderer. Another staple of the renderer's diet, in addition to farm animals, is euthanized pets the six or seven million dogs and cats that are killed in animal shelters every year. The city of Los Angeles alone, for example, sends some 200 tons of euthanized cats and dogs to a rendering plant every month. Added to the blend are the euthanized catch of animal control agencies and roadkill. When this gruesome mix is ground and steam cooked, the lighter fatty material floating to the top gets refined for use in such products as cosmetics, lubricants, soaps, candles, and waxes. So, um, that's how that stuff ends up in some of our products. And, you know, so there's the, like, who cares, really? Um, for me, there's an, a big ick factor. Um, those products are not adding anything typically to the product. They, they're essentially put in there as fillers. Um, they're slimy and if they sit on your skin long enough, sure, they will soak in. Um, the, the issue comes actually with that absorption because um, you are your skin is a porous organ, and so it's absorbing um, or can absorb some of those hormones, antibiotics that, you know, farm animals anyway, might have been injected with or fed. Um, you also, you know, if you zoom out a little bit, you also um, have to look at what they're eating and, you know, was that grass or grain um, treated with pesticides or herbicides or fungicides. Um, it's just, you know, there are safer, easier ways to get, um, you know, the moisturization into your products. And then from, you know, if you're not super icked out about that, then maybe what will speak to you is that the molecular size of those fats is usually bigger than a human skin cell, and so it can clog your pores, which traps in dirt and oil, and you know, can lead to things like acne and blackheads. So maybe that's the part that speaks to you. But anyway, if you don't want to smear rendered raccoon guts all over yourselves, then you know, I want to give you two little tips for finding products that do not contain animal ingredients. Um, the first is to, there's a handy dandy hand cream that's sitting on my desk. The first is to, let me see where my, um, can you see this? Uh, I don't know how the bloggy kids make, the, make this work, but there's a little sign there that says vegan. So you want to look for that V for vegan. That tells you that there are no animal products or byproducts in your product, which is great news. The other thing you can do is go to the PETA website and, you know, no need to click on the scary animal videos if that's not your thing, but PETA maintains a, an active list of um, 
companies that contain animal products and byproducts and companies that test or do not test on animals. And recently there were um, two big manufacturers of personal care products that PETA moved from their does not test on animals list to their does test on animals list because and then this is not the video that I was planning on doing today, but um, in order for a, ma a, a manufacturer to do business in China, they have to test their products on animals. Even if it's a heritage product formula that they've had and been selling for decades, um, this is why Arbon will very likely never market into China, or at least not until China changes that regulation. Um, and that's, you know, it's a huge market. There are over a billion people living in China. So economically, um, if you can get even, if you touch one tenth of that market, then that makes it financially worth it for a company who is willing to compromise their either ingredients or their ingredient policy or their cruelty policy. So that's just a random side note. But if you've been to an Arbonne class with someone, me or, or another Arbonne consultant, you know that Arbonne does not um, test on animals and never has since um, the, the idea came to Petter Mork in 1975 when he started building those formulas and the infrastructure to develop the company. So, and the company has never used any animal products or byproducts. So for Arbonne, that is a heritage philosophy that we've been following for 41 years. Um, it's not, you know, it's not new and faddish. We're not trying to be cool. It's, that's just, we've always done business that way. The, the founder and our initial herbalist, botanist, and cosmetics chemists in Switzerland all recognized that those products and byproducts were not, they, it didn't meet Arbonne's philosophy of pure, safe, and beneficial, but also um, it just it didn't add anything to the formulations. It cheapened what could be a beautiful product line. So they left it out. It was just the, the ick factor was too high. So um, there's your little tidbit for the day. Turn your ingredient labels around. Look for collagen, elastin, keratin, lanolin, tallow, and tallowate. And if you find it, do me a favor and snap a little, you know, screenshot or picture of it and post it for us um, so we can all see what it looks like on an ingredient label. I switched all of my products to Arbonne 10 and a half years ago, so there's literally nothing in my house that I can use as, as an example. And I personally believe that we vote with our wallets and even as cheap as you know some lotions on the market are, I am personally unwilling to spend my money on a what I consider to be a cheap, crappy product just to show you an example. I may, in one of these days, run into a Walgreens or you know some big box store and flip some uh, products around and. There's, I'm going to make you car sick because I'm going to do a lot of back and forth, you know, changing the orientation of the video. But if that would be interesting, let me know. That would be kind of fun for me because I'm a big fat nerd. But anyway, happy Friday. Enjoy your treasure hunt. I hope you find none of those ingredients. Toodaloo.